Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite land niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm tired, a good exhausted, if you will, because I just got uh, home from Vegas. Vegas, baby. The two day Land Geek boot camp. And of course, this man needs no introduction because. I got to spend all weekend with my good buddy. Got him away from the ocean, got him away from the waves, just so he could spend the weekend with the Land Geek community, Jaran Frazier. Welcome wow. again to the podcast. What's up, buddy? That was a very – thank you for the welcome. I appreciate that. It sounded a lot like the conference, actually. That's right. That's right. So what, what do you think of the conference? What, I, what were you expecting, and how did it what, how did it go for you? Uh, I, I was expecting there to be a clown when I got there to do some tricks and stuff, but uh, it all worked out pretty well. I think uh, <clears throat> you know you up on stage uh, sharing a ton of inf- good 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 information. Uh, that was the most uh, undervalued uh, conference I've ever been to. Thank you. You mean uh, that we gave more value than? Correct. Undervalued meaning we didn't. We should have charged everybody like ten thousand to come and not uh, given them. Free tickets to those who had the toolkit and charged a few hundred bucks to those that didn't. So yeah, that's right. That's right. Exchange in in abundance. Yes. Which is yes. a which was a topic that we talked about. And Correct. Uh, you know, I have to. You know, before we really get into the podcast in Vegas, I do want to thank everybody that came from near and far. We had people from Vegas come to the event. We had people come from as far as Boston. Jeff was there. We had people from the West Coast, Utah, California. We had people from North Carolina there. But my buddy, Ben Hutchins, flew in from Sydney, Australia for the two-day, two-day boot camp. And, uh, and he actually won the, the land raffle. I was so, so pleased. And, uh, and now I've got stressed because I got all this stuff I have to get back to from being gone for two days and playing catch up. And, uh, and I still have to get Ben out his deed. So, Ben, if you're listening, I haven't forgotten about that. Yeah, con- congrats, Ben. Uh, congrats to uh, everybody. I think there's a couple of prizes that were given away, or at least one, uh, which it's really weird, Mark, because you kept talking about Apple, 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 and then you give away a Windows tablet. I'm confused. Yeah, exactly. Why? It made perfect sense. If I'm a Mac guy, why would I give out an iPad? I'd give it to my kids. That's true. Yeah. That's really true. If, you know, the, but the Surface is nice. It is, it is nice. I do want to say also thank you uh, all for, for coming. It was a pleasure. I think I had a chance to shake just about everybody's hand. Uh, but if I, yeah. didn't, I, if I didn't, I apologize. But it was great meeting everybody. I do want to apologize uh, to those that had to hear me sound like a, a dog crying when I busted <laughs> out some opera music. But uh, That was great. <laughs> do it again. Can you do it? The, no. the, if, for everybody that missed the boot camp, this is what you missed. Just, just give a little quick sample of what you sang. No, I'm not. Dude. Come on, man. I'm, I know I know you're not my performing monkey. Dude, but come on. One bar. Everyone no. loved it. No, I can't. I can't do it. Sorry. Really? Sorry. You gotta pay you gotta pay next time to come to the conference and and I will have this is my this is my guarantee for the next conference. I can't I, sing, I can't afford your uh your fees. I will sing I will sing uh, a different song in Latin next time we come uh, to the conference. It'll be a good one. It'll be one that most people know, but it'll be in Latin. It's good. It's good. You're funny. <laughs> but you made you made it a vacation, so yes. Duran brought his beautiful model wife to the event, and she spent about a, a good fifteen minutes. I was thrilled that she didn't fall asleep. That was yes. really the whole goal. Will Lauren fall asleep while I'm talking? Because the kids are back home. Who watched the kids? My mom. My your, mom. Your mom watched the kids. So yep. that was like a vacation. You guys went to the beach. We did. Not, we did. not the then- beach. The pool. I mean. And then, and then, funny story. Actually, when I when I left after my little um, my little speaking performance at about two thirty or so, I went to the pool and I met this gentleman who was like one of the one of the heads at Red Bull, and uh, and he said, "Hey, join us tonight. We're going to you know a little concert at, at, at the Win." And we go over there, and he he took care of us like we were royalty, which was pretty awesome. So 
yeah. it was a uh, it was a win win for us. So it was pretty cool. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean Vegas was so fun, and the Marriott, even though it wasn't on the Strip, it was a, it was a really nice hotel. I was surprised how nice it was. It was big. Yeah, it was. Two it towers. Was big. Definitely big. You know, it was really neat. I don't know if you had a chance to go visit, but it was amazing. Uh, it was called Tivoli Village or Tivoli Village. I don't know how you pronounce I think, it. I think it's pronounced Tivoli. Yeah, Tivoli Village, which which Lauren and I walked to on the uh, the second morning of the conference. We walked over there, had breakfast, but what, what an incredible little place. It was really cool, and they're expanding, it looks like, on that on that uh, development, which is neat. Right, right. But, yeah, I was just so thrilled with the uh, turnout and that everybody came. And, you know, we started as – sort of a classroom, right? And by the end of the weekend, we were definitely a cohesive community. And watching that evolve and watching people, you know, network with one another, exchange cards, tell their stories, tell their success stories about how they're making money, buying and selling land, whether it was for cash flips, you know, doing land notes. Uh, the energy in the room was palpable. I mean, everyone there was excited. Everyone there, whether they've been doing it for five years or just in their first year, just they just got it, and they saw the uh, the potential with it. And you know, Paul's story about him flipping land and making, you know, what was it? I forget the number, maybe fifteen, twenty thousand dollars without even putting a dime out of his own pocket. That was pretty cool. And uh, Vin Smith telling his story. I've got I've got all of it on video so i'll put it up there but uh everyone there that's doing deals and sending out offers everyone's crushing it everyone and, and every, we all support each other it, it was it was really nice what, what what did people kind of uh ask you during the event where it was what were some of the frequently asked questions uh you know i didn't get i didn't get a whole bunch of I, it was it was it was neat and just so everybody knows, I, I do really appreciate um, the feedback that I received at the event, uh, the way people talk to me, and you know, it's it's uh, it's it's an affirmation for guys like Mark and I who who do kind of put our neck out there and do this podcast. It's it is affirmation to know that you guys do get something from this podcast and us talking. Yeah. Um, so so that was really neat for me, and and uh, so I just you know I I got to meet a lot of people, told a few people my story. Obviously, me being involved in a mining project and sort of like where land's taken me. It's been really cool just to kind of share that story with other people. But I just, you know, it was just neat talking. To, I, I was asking a lot of questions more than I was receiving them because I like to know how people are doing and, and uh, you know, where this where this investor's toolkit has taken them. So, Yeah, it was, it was, it was really a great event. And, uh, and things, for the most part, I thought went smoothly because it's not like I'm a professional speaker and I've done this a whole lot, right? Yeah, there's, so, there's absolutely no doubt you're not a professional speaker. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, was, I was, I have to admit, I'm, I was thoroughly impressed. I thought I was gonna have to rip you and be like, okay, Mark, give me the microphone. I'm talking. I know, uh, Mark. You, for, I mean, and I told you that the first day. I said, dude, gosh, that was really impressive because I got up there and just so everybody knows, I don't speak. I mean, I do. I sit on some boards and I do talk to people, 10, 15, 20, but I sit in a chair and talk. I don't get up in front of people and do a presentation or or kind of talk about my story. I got choked up a couple of times because there's parts of my life that you know I you know I did come from some humble beginnings and I did take care of a little boy with cerebral palsy when I was you know 20 21 years old and those a lot of those things are sort of like you know very uh, very impressionable in my life and so you know talking about it in front of a group of you know 50 or 60 or 70 people is isn't that easy. So it was again it was just neat um, but Mark from from a composure standpoint definitely did a heck of a lot better than I did so Yeah thank you. It was funny because I when it, you know Thursday night when I got in um, I was just a wreck. All I could think of was okay is the projector going to work? Are we going to have enough coffee? Uh, what's the I didn't even cuz I got in late. I'm like I, I didn't even see the room first. And uh, I was just so nervous. And then when I got in there and saw, and, and not just saw everybody, but just like felt that warmth and uh, it, you know, the nerves went away and, and I was able to really present the, uh, the information. I thought in a, for the, for the most part, a, a very uh, logical way. Yep. And we did a lot of Q&A as well. It was it was really more me talking Q and A and kind of mastermind where people would share their stories and the room was smarter than just me. 
Yeah, there was uh, there was a lot of it. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. There was probably about 55 people in that room that were smarter than we were, uh, including a couple of doctors that were sitting in that room that made us, you know, just listening to them speak. You're just like, holy mackerel, these guys are intelligent. Uh, but but again, it goes to show you that that. Uh, you know, they, they look at their lifestyle and as intelligent as they are and as much schooling as they've gone through, um, they, they want something different. They want passive income. They want a, right. they want a lifestyle that they can control. Yeah, so. I mean, everybody wants out of the grind. And today, it's not like what it was in the 80s for doctors. I mean, it is a grind, a high paid grind, but subtle economic dependency. They're not working, they're not making any money, and they really saw the value of, of the one-time sale getting recurring revenue with an asset that is so simple. No toilets, no trash, no tenants, no termites, raw land. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And it was just so wonderful for me to see everyone kind of like the light bulb go, go off and get it, right? Yep. There's nothing more discouraging when I'm talking to, uh, to somebody who's just always focused on single family homes and I start talking about raw land and you see that their eyes glaze over and uh, like, no, no, you don't have to do all this work to do it. They, you know, most people, when they think raw land, they think, oh, I've got to do phase one environmental, phase two environmental. And they think, oh, the highest and best use is go vertical. And I'm not in that business and I don't want to be a developer. And I don't want to take that kind of risk. And I'm thinking, no, it's not that difficult at all. Yeah. But, and it, it, if a friend of mine was telling me today that, now, one of his clients had gone, just went through a program, a, a, a flip program, a house flipping program. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, gosh, you know, they've got a market that's saturated and pretty much dried up is right. the, house, the house flipping market. And, and in reality, when you've got 1,500 companies competing to, to, to buy, not only buy and sell flips, but then another 1,500 that are competing to sell you a program on how to do it, you think about a, you know, just a, a, a tipping point of a, or a saturated market. You look at something like this. There really isn't competition. I mean, there's right. nobody, there's no one that knows how to do it better than you and I. We've been doing it for the last 15 years, and we have a lot of the secrets these people need, and you know, contacts to to make these things happen. So I think it's really, it, it's a huge benefit to have something where you, you do have a niche market and people get it, and people don't have to go, gosh, well, what about all those other people? There's just, there's no competition. Yeah, yeah, it was it was cool. So Vegas was great. We will do another event. I'm, pre I'm thinking we might do Vegas again, uh, either late August, early September. So put that in your calendar right now. If you missed the first Land Geek Boot Camp or you want to go to the next one, you're welcome to come and uh, bring a friend because we'd really like to have even more people at the next event. So everyone that's invested in the Investor's Toolkit gets two free tickets. But we're really going to start marketing the event now and, and get more people uh, there so that there's just more opportunities for people that want to change their lives and either work this business part time. Maybe they want to really go into this big like a business and quit their job like I did and do it full time, there's there's no better way to, to really have all that information uh, except when it's live, right? I mean, home study courses are great, but there's nothing like being able to talk to the person that created it and other people in the room and get that information. Wouldn't you agree? I would totally agree. And there's going to be a couple, I'm going to make a couple promises now for that September uh, conference. One is I'm going to promise you that we're going to have some different, a different, at least one or two different speakers that are going to be really compelling to kind of maybe talk about some marketing aspects, and we'll we'll figure it out. I'm just making a promise right. now. Mark's, Mark's probably looking at me like, dude, you better shut your mouth. I'm well, talking, we'll see. I'm if we can get you know, we had Wayne Allen Root at this event, and he, I mean, that guy is unbelievable. I don't know how old he is, but I've never met a more energetic human being in my entire life. Have you? Um, maybe me, but probably after like one Red Bull. Yeah, I mean, he was like Duran on 10 Red Bulls. <laughs> he was that's, unbelievable. That's funny. Such, he had such passion coming yeah. out and the whole branding program. I hope everyone that was there enjoyed him. He's kind of a big deal. He, he is kind of a big deal. Yeah, if you, if you don't know him, he ran for 2008 uh, vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. And he's, he's like the Jimmy the Greek of Vegas. Um, <laughs> and he does, he, does a, he does a lot. 
he's a he's what they what a capitalist evangelist. So Google Wayne Allen Root. He was at the event speaking for uh, at, at, on day two, and I was really impressed with him. Yeah, there's uh, one more promise I need to make, and that will be that uh, Land Hub will at least have phase one, potentially phase two, done by the conference. So there'll be some sweet um, coupon codes with, uh, with yeah. that hopefully there, some uh, promotional codes to uh, utilize Land Hub. So that was my little self-promotion, sorry, Mark. No, no, you know, what I like, you know what I like about that is you put a drop dead date. So yeah. in 90, you have to have it done in the next 90 days. And if you set that goal, you'll get it done. But what happens is if we don't have a time-bound goal to set, then things get in the way. Life gets in the way. Lauren says, hey, can you go watch the kids? And you lose focus. And now that you've actually publicly put it out there, that Land Hub will be done phase two in the next 90 days, you've got to do it, right? Exactly. I have no choice. And, and, I mean, but, but I think you should write it down too. It's not, it's not a goal unless it's written down. I put it next to the, the picture of my Tesla on my, on my uh, wall over here. On the vision board? Don't are you gonna, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna haze me about the vision board and the Tesla? Come on! Oh, you're hilarious. You still have that? No, you bought your Tesla. That's right. I have not bought the Tesla. You liar! I have not bought, bought the Tesla. You know what? I, I it's, on, it's it's on the to do list though. You know what? It's so funny because we're talking about a couple. You know, I actually want to talk about a couple things about Tesla because it kind of involves land. I'll tell you in a second why. Okay. You know, you know the whole we were talking about like how Prius is better for the environment. What happens when when those batteries don't work anymore? Isn't oh, like a, you know, you know what? That is a good question. That's a that's an excellent question. I don't know what happens with the batteries. I'm but I'm sure there's a an environmentally sound way to replace those batteries. I think those Tesla batteries go a park, long time. You park them in the Yucca Mountain facility where yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not going to get a Tesla for a long time because uh, I, I it's just not me to go out and spend that kind of money on a car, but. Uh, it, it is on the to-do list because I believe in their story. I, I believe that driving an all-electric vehicle is good for the environment and it, and it jives with my worldview. Yeah. So that's that's really more where I'm coming from than the the ego side of it that I have to have you know a cool car like that. Yeah. Now I don't want to get I don't want to get in trouble, but there. I, I also question like, is there are there any EMF ramifications? Like, are there? I assume it's pretty high in EMF. Come that, on. Dude, I'm just saying, Come you know. I, go go to the Tesla dealership. Uh, well, I have. I've driven the car. You, I, 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 car. I, I can't I stand the way I. If I want something, you always have to take the wind out of my sails. Why sorry. can't I just want a Tesla? Sorry. Oh, Did I'm sorry. Something? EMF. Yeah, the okay. batteries. It's good for the environment. Look, I got a couple little kids. Oh, you do too. Anyway, so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what, one what's a, I mean, I, okay, let's let's imagine for a second that the one battery is not going to have as detrimental effect on the environment as your gas guzzler. My gas guzzler. Just so you guys all know, I'm driving an Elio, an E L I O. Whatever. L look it up on your computer. Yeah. It, was, it gets 84 miles a gallon, and it's 6,800 dollars. Right. Um, if you guys, I don't, if you guys haven't seen that, that's my that's my tip of the week. Uh, Elio. Least, Eliomotors.com. The guy's out of out of Phoenix, I think, and uh, basically the guy has built, I think, on like a motorcycle chassis, a, a two-person car, front and back, and they go into production, I think, in the next six months. Um, and they bought like a, I think, a big a big manufacturing plant in uh, in Detroit uh, or oh, revamp. I, I like it. Built in America. Yeah. So it's really cool. It's it's a, but it's sixty hundred bucks, and it's a, it's a one seater in the front. One yeah, day. it sounds real safe. It's no, it's the, the that's what's crazy. It's very safe. How can so it be safe? Just just look it up. Stop stop trying to uh, fight with me here. Okay. Sec secondly, what's really interesting is, and I and I and I was mentioning that there's some there's some uh, land uh, implications with Tesla. So Tesla is looking at a very big facility in four different states: Arizona and Nevada are two of them. Right. They are seriously looking at a place in Nevada. I'm. I'm praying it's close to my property that I have about six or seven thousand acres uh, in Crest Valley, but I don't think that's the case. Um, I think they're looking in a little town called Fernley, Nevada. Fernley, so, I know Fernley really well. So, so okay, so let's pretend that this comes to fruition. How can we jump on that now? I mean, do you think we should speculate right now? I'll tell you what I would do right now. 
is start sending out a mailing campaign and start sending out offers to everybody that owes back taxes in Fernley. Yep, yep. Or you just find it, get their names and numbers, give them a call. I mean, like, look, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's, uh, yeah, but it's, it may, it's still it may be a little early. Play, though. It may be a little early and a little speculative um, to, to do that. But, uh, I mean, they're, I think they're, I don't know how many employees they're bringing in, seven or 10,000 employees, something like that. Um, so they're bringing in several, several, several thousand employees to the area. The infrastructure is a great, it's a great place from a growth perspective. They can grow in Fernley. Um, you know, Reno is sort of, you know, I don't, I mean, they're looking for a lot of land and Reno doesn't have a ton of it. Um, so they need to be a little bit on the outskirts. It's about 30 miles, um, 30 miles north, northeast of Reno. Yeah. You know what I want to ask you? Because I get yes. this question a lot um, from newbies is where do you think the best place is to start? Um, I would say Arizona, New Mexico, or Nevada. So you wouldn't say your own backyard? No. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say that either, especially if you live in an area like on the East Coast. Yeah. That just the prices are just too high. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it would be – I would, I would focus on – I mean, look, the, the western U.S., um, you know, Colorado, Arizona. I mean, there's, there's about six states that I would look at. You know, right. Texas. Texas is good, but Texas has so much land. Um, and Te yeah, and Texas is great, though. People love Texas. Do you do you like Texas? Do you I love like Texas, Texas from, from a tax perspective? Um, you know, Oregon's good. You know, I don't know much about Idaho, but there are several states right. that that I would that I would definitely look at away. I mean, if you're on the East Coast and you're looking at buying, and people are like, oh gosh, it, that's a big risk. Well, look, Mark and I did it. Mark and I were in Nevada. When I was living in San Diego, partially part time in Nevada, um, but I didn't buy it because it was it was in my backyard. I bought land because that was you know we we put a very good deal together. Uh, but but right. I was when I was in college, I was buying in New Mexico, so I would jump on a plane and I would show the up show up to the auction. Nowadays, you can probably get by without doing that. So right, right. So you know, speaking of Texas, I got a call during the event, and. Uh, it was pretty interesting because it was from a woman that has property in this one county in Texas. And she's like, oh, I've got 5.16 acres here. I paid 4,500 for it, but um, I'll just liquidate it for $1,100. And she leaves this on my voicemail. And I'm thinking to myself, man, if it weren't for you know our experience by doing this for so long, you know, that that would have been just throw money thrown away because in this area, in this county, if you don't have ten acres or more, they won't record the deed. You wow. have to be, yeah. So like in that rural area, the county attorney, the the recorder gets the deed, kicks it off to the county attorney. The county attorney looks at it and says, no, that's too that's too rural, mm -hmm. and because of that, it has to be ten acres or more. They don't record the deed. Wow. Uh, now I learned this the hard way a few years ago. But luckily, I had adjoining lots, so it didn't really affect me financially. Yeah. But I was just laughing to myself, like, "Oh my gosh, if she sent that that voicemail to one of my coaching students, and they bought it, they wouldn't be able to sell it. They'd kick back the deed." Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting. Interesting. I um, I actually was, you know, on that same topic, but but a little different. I was looking at back at uh, some of the auctions I went through in New Mexico, and and how good some of those properties were, and how cheap I sold them. You, you, know, you sold them too cheaply. Oh my gosh! I mean, and there there are you know there are certain people out there that just you know we and we talked about this briefly kind of when we mastermind inside that uh, conference about how certain people just were were all about a really slim margin, just wanted to make ten or fifteen percent. We know some people out there like that that just don't care. It's just it's just a business of a, it's just a margin game, and those are the guys right. that you end up stealing property from. Well, I mean, and, you know, and you can look at other business models because, like, let, let's look at another passive model, right? What if I wanted to build a uh, a self serve car wash, right? Have you seen those car washes? They're three dollars, five dollars, seven dollars, uh, and then you just put in your card, and maybe it's an extra dollar upsell if they're going to dry it. So that's mm -hmm. a one, you, you build that thing one time, and those those car washes have tremendous margins, and there's very little overhead, and so it's kind of similar in the sense that you build it once, and then you just keep getting the recurring revenue. Now there's maintenance involved and you gotta keep up with the soap and this and that. But it's certainly not, there's not as much brain damage on these self-serve car washes as there are with like a traditional business, for example, right? 
mm-hmm. or if you had an apartment building even. So, I mean, it's, it's an interesting real estate play. But what happens is, is that you can't protect that area. So someone else can build a car wash that might be happy making 15% instead of 30%. Yeah. And now you've just split the the car population in one area and the guy that's, oh, I'm, I'm making a killing, he just saw his whole business cut in half from the competition. And uh, luckily for us, we don't see that a whole lot. Yeah. No, uh, I, I agree. I think I think it, uh, it, when it comes to real estate, I think people are a little bit more intelligent about their approach to sales and how they, and how they market it. And, and uh, it's just, to me, it, you know, it's, it's totally different. You're looking at right. something that, that um, it's, it's not, you know, it, it's not a resource like land is. Right. And, and, and every piece of land is unique. So yeah. it can, I mean, you know, be a marketing play in the sense that you can add more value, you can make improvements to it. And so the guy that's just liquidating it online and making it look like it's not very valuable because his, he doesn't care about his margin for whatever reason, mm-hmm. you can go in there and you can completely blow the guy out of the water because you can, you can attract the buyer that has the worldview, oh, I want this, this, and this for my land. That stuff is junk. But this looks great, even though it might be in the same vicinity. Yeah. And so that positioning becomes critical. And once you learn how to do that with with marketing, and we talked about that a whole lot this weekend. Yeah. Who do you yeah. want to be? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Duran, I know you're tired from Vegas, but you know what I'm going to ask you. What is your tip of the week? We're at so- that point. So um, there is a little website and also an app that you can take on on the road with you. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to pop in GPSs and it pulls up these GPSs and it uses a topographic map to do so. And the app is called Gaia, G-A-I-A, GPS. Wait a second. I got to check this out. G-A, G-A-I-A? GPS. GPS GPS.com? Yep. I'm going there now. Perfect. To- wow, this looks really good. Look at this. So, when you're looking at property and you've got and you've got uh, GPS coordinates, you pop it in. This also helps you find GPS coordinates if you're on a property. You can mark it. It's very. It's a very neat app. I think it costs. I want to say uh, ten bucks or twenty bucks or something like that. I'm not sure. Let me see. No, it's twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Um, but pr- a pretty cool app. That's so, really cool. That's a that's a nice app. Yep, it's pretty expensive so, for an app, but it's worth it, isn't it? It is. It, it is worth it. Because think of the marketing. You go on. You go on the property, or you have your VA or your, um, you know, your Craigslist gig person go on the property. Yeah. And they have to get this app. So you know, figure it's an extra twenty bucks. So maybe it's fifty bucks for them, twenty bucks for the app. But then they have the coordinates, and you can use that person again and again in that same area. I mean, how much is a GPS unit to buy? Uh, I think a GP. I mean, you probably get a decent one for a hundred bucks. But I think these work. A, I think this app is a little bit better. But uh, but so you're talking twenty bucks, but you put it on your phone, and it works just like a GPS. It works just so, like a GPS. Yeah. So pretty it, cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a it's got a social aspect to it. You you pick you put the uh, photos up. Yep. So That's I'm looking at Bryce Fairview right now. Yep. Wow, and I can see the topo map. This would be great for marketing. They include images. Wow, this is incredible. You're welcome, Mark, and everyone listening. Duran. Once again, I say You're really paying it forward. Thank you, sir. With this tip. Nice job, buddy. Thank you. Nice job. Well, my tip of the week is not nearly as cool as GAIAGPS.com, but if utilized correctly, is going to make you a ton more money than Duran's tip. My tip is lists.nextmark.com. And so this is a fantastic way to create like a mailing list campaign for marketing, right? So you can then drill down into your consumers and you can say, okay, I've got a piece of property I own in Texas and I want to really focus on people that own alternative investments, gold, silver, 
bullion, whatever. So I want to just send out a mailing about my land just to these people that have these attributes. They might be, you know, have income of this amount um, and they might have this demographic. So you can really drill down. And then you know they subscribe to these types of magazines. And it's amazing. And then you send out your, your mailing uh, and they'll even help you with the mailing. And it's great. So it's easy, it's free, it works. And the domain again? Lists.nextmark.com. What is it again? Lists.nextmark, N E X T M A R K.com. I'll have a link to it. So by the time this podcast comes out, I will be on the road and uh, taking a little family vacation to the Midwest. My wife's best friend is getting married. And, uh, and then we're going to go to uh, a resort in. Uh, the Wisconsin Dells, the kids are going to go play in like this water park area. So it's wow. going to be great. I was hoping you would tell me you're taking the family to Sizzler. And this, now you're well, done. we might go to Sizzler. The, the kids want that. <laughs> I, think I think there's one Sizzler left and I don't know where it is. is but no, do, do people still left. go to the Sizzler? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm leaving too on uh, Monday. I'm, I'll be in Florida for uh, 10 days, taking the family to Disney World, um, hanging out. I actually met my wife in Orlando, for those that don't know me that well or didn't have a chance to listen to part of my story. I met my wife in Orlando about almost nine years ago. and um, at, at Wow, a, nine years. I remember that. At a trade show. And uh, and so we're going back to Orlando. My wife's family is there. So we get to spend some time with them and uh, and then catch up with some old friends. And so that should be cool. We're going to be there for, gosh, almost two weeks. So that's pretty neat. Wow. Has Lauren had her 30s yet? No. <laughs> She's still a couple <laughs> years away, buddy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, she's getting super old. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. So, uh, if you want more tips, tricks, techniques on how to make additional income actively and passively by buying and selling raw land, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the passive income blueprint. Get the ebook, how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes, and of course, get this podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. And listen to Duran Hazeby each and every week, even though he's probably not on every week. But um, it's a, it's always a good time. So give Duran some love. Check out LandHub.com, a great resource for you to market your property. Uh, check out his wholesale land at ReserveLand.com. And if Duran doesn't have anything you want, check out my properties, FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Duran, are we good? I think we're good, Mark. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to our little vacations. Yeah, just another shout out. Thank you so much again to everyone that attended the two-day geek, two uh, Land Geek Boot Camp. We will be having another event late August, early September, so be on the lookout for it. If you uh, want details now, email the office, support at thelandgeek.com, and we will let you know as soon as that event is booked where you need to go and what you need to be. And uh, Duran, thanks a lot. Are we good? I think we're good. All thank right. you all. Thank you all again. I appreciate it. All right. We'll see everybody next week. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.